<laughs> I might get one for tomorrow. Do? Yeah, maybe not. 8.30, <laughs> time to get the news, travel and weather where you are. See you in a sec. I... On Jeremy's report, we'll bring that to you again a little bit later when we get that sorted. Now, uh, it's just coming up to ten past seven. And on this day, a hundred years ago, the BBC broadcast its first ever radio programme. That was 1922. So that listeners could take notes. <laughs> Yes. You have been warned. Yeah. We'll be asking questions a little bit later. I'm uh, not sure anyone will be taking notes of us this morning, but they perhaps might be taking notes next. Carol's got the weather. Thank Always you. paying attention to Carol. Always. 12 minutes past seven. A big health story for you this morning. Yes, because a screening programme aimed at improving the diagnosis and management of type 1 diabetes is being launched today, which is World Diabetes Day. Uh, charities, Diabetes UK and JDRF are hoping to recruit 20,000 children aged between three and 13 years old to take part. Tim Muffet has been speaking to one family about the impact the condition has on them. It was just so big, wasn't it? Saturday nights on that telly. Do you remember it from when we were kids? Oh, it's brilliant. And he, he, he prided himself on getting the best tricks and the yeah. best magic boxes yeah. and all that sort of stuff from all over the world. So yeah. What a collection. Quite a collection. And I can hear the catchphrase all the time. <laughs> I'm not going to do it now. Uh, 25 past seven. In the next hour here on Breakfast, we're going to catch up with Rugby League's Kevin Sinfield. Best yeah. magic boxes yeah. and all that sort of stuff from all over the world. So yeah. What a collection. Quite a collection. And I can hear the catchphrase all the time. It be a trilogy, the challenges, when he did his first one, seven marathons in seven days, seven in seven, his target was £77,000. So it's gone up a bit since then. It has. He's done a tremendous thing, hasn't he? So many of you getting in touch this morning with uh, messages for him and his team to encourage them uh, throughout the next week and also messages of support, financial support, offering uh, to donate as well to the cause. If you want to know where they're going, uh, they left Melrose about half an hour ago for day two. Uh, they end up at Otterburn Castle at half past three this afternoon. What, 40 miles is it today? Mm, a long way. It's a hell of a long way. <laughs> all you need to know is it's more than a marathon. It's a lot more. So they've basically got like seven, eight hours of running. Uh, and it's not just Kev, it's the whole team around him. They did a brilliant job. So Melrose to Otterburn, cheer them along the way if you can. Uh, much more on that coming up here on the programme in the next half hour. But now it's time to get the news where you are. Response this morning to uh, that film with Samuel. We'll play it again a little bit later before the end and we'll keep in touch with him in the weeks and months to come. Cristiano Ronaldo has been speaking... I think probably very much for the... F You're ready for it. <laughs> I'm not really. I'm not ready for it. Nobody's ready for it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I guess we need it, don't we? And it's about time. Uh, it's 7.53. Now, every musician's dream is to make a successful career from playing the instrument they picked up as a child. And cellist Sheku Kale Mason has managed to do just that. He learned to play at the age of six and has since, well, he's done everything, hasn't he? He's yes. won the BBC Young Musician of the Year. He performed, you'll remember, at the wedding of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. And last night, you might well have seen him on the Strictly Results show. We're going to speak to him in a moment. But first, let's have a listen. We needed that this morning. Thank you. We <laughs> did. And Sheku's new album is called Song. His single is called Same Boat. It's 7.59. We'll have the headlines coming up. <laughs> 